Hi, welcome back to the Arcade Repair Tips video series. Today we're going to shoot a very special video on tube rejuvenation. I'm over here at my good friend Stanley Bell's house and we're in his uh, shop or garage today in his game room and uh, he's going to teach us how to rejuvenate a tube. I know we talk about that a lot, Stan, about, you know, when should you rejuvenate a tube or a lot of people don't quite understand. We throw that term out there, but we need to show everybody how to do it. Sure. Well, so, thanks for having me today. Uh, well, with tube rejuvenation, what we want to do is when, since they are really are not making more monitors, we need to fix the ones that we got. And what tube rejuvenation will do is basically uh, restore the colors, uh, clean off the CRT cathode. If you ever notice in the back of the the neck, there's a clear glass tube. Well, in there. Uh, are elements that get carbon buildup and dust buildup and different things like that and they get shorts and it'll cause the colors to bleed together the colors to fade out and basically what we're doing with tube rejuvenation is we're putting more power through there than supposed to be there and during that time it burns off any kind of debris um, it shortens the life a little bit of your tube, but I've never lost a tube yet. It only makes them look better. Alright. So, Stan, um, what, what we're talking about is that area where you guys, we talk about neck glow. That's what he's going to do. He's going to hook up a machine to the back of the neck. And by doing that, he's going to run uh, his rejuvenator through there. Like he said, he's going to send some high currents up, up inside there and try to get rid of the shorts and stuff. And uh, so, t uh, Stan, just you got a lot of games in your game room. How many of these games have you done this to? I've probably done this to about 30 of my games, Tim, total. And uh, it has improved the black uh, in every one of the games, improved the red in all the games, the, uh, the blues in the game. It really helps with, with making the colors vibrant again. Right. So it doesn't have to be a monitor that's like 30 years old. In fact, Today we're actually doing this for a customer of ours. And this monitor is probably less than 10 years old. So if you've had, you know, it's over five years old, you're just not getting quite the color that uh, you're expecting from your tube, or maybe you've done a cap kit. Uh, this is probably one area that I think of a lot, saying is we've had monitors me and you have worked on before, and we've done cap kits, and it was better, but it just wasn't quite what we hope wasn't quite as crisp. Well, this will help in that area, too. So if you've done a cap kit, maybe a new flyback, but your picture still not as bright as you'd like, then maybe it is time to get your tube rejuvenated. Or if you've watched our video on testing the tube, and you'll notice that one of your colors is out, this is a good way to maybe try to get that color back before you scrap your tube. Yeah. But anyway, well, come on in, Jonathan. Let's take a look at the equipment that we're going to use today, and we'll get started with this video. This is our BK470 uh, picture tube rejuvenator, um, tester and rejuvenator. It also cleans um, and, and clears any shorts. So I want to take you through a real quick step. If you notice here, there's a button that says red, green, blue, and all these little white lines that connect to this center knob. Okay, if you see as I turn the knob, you'll see the meter goes up to these different sections. Well, they all correlate. We have a gun selector because when we connect up this connector here, to the actual tube, you see it just looks like it goes right back on the on the back of the neck, right there. The same little holes that would connect up right on the back of your neck board. We plug this in, uh, and that's how we communicate with the tube. We set the gun selector to the different setting, and then we look for leakages, which set the heater voltage. This manual will tell you, and you can get this offline. Um, just download. Uh, from different sites the actual chart to see what kind of voltage you want to set your monitor to but normally we're looking about 8 to 11 10 to 12 for standard voltage that we're looking for we're going to set the heater range for that and then we will remove the shorts as you can see here we'll clean and balance and then we'll re rejuvenate and we're going to do that for each color we're going to do that for the red or black and white and the green and then the blue and we'll do that by selecting each gun and then adjusting this meter here to where it says to set tracking. And we'll go through that in a minute, but this will rejuvenate, clean, and remove shorts. Stan, talk about this right here. You said this was an adapter. Did this come with this? This particular adapter, 
and you see there's a plug right here that plugs in. This is a BKCR23. Well, this particular one did not come with it. If you'll notice here, there are about a dozen different adapters for different types of monitors and different types of neck boards. Large ones, small ones, like for little bitty ones, uh, uh, like the little 13 inch for uh, cocktails, uh, or I mean uh, cabarets, or very large ones, different types of monitors. The CR23 is about the most common there is, and I picked this up off of eBay for about 20 bucks uh, that connects straight into um, my harness on my BK. And uh, I use this one about 80% of the time for any rejuvenations. All the games in my game room uh, use the CR23. So most of the games from the 80s and the 90s that are 19 inch uh, use a CR23. How do you know it uses this one and not one of those? Well, that's a good question. If you notice how the pin setup is, it has a key set out right there to where <clears throat> it can only go in one way. The pins are spaced a certain amount of way, and so if it doesn't fit, if, you, if we look at number four here, you can see a direct correlation of the difference between the key and the pins. These are spread out farther than this one and then this one, and so it's pretty, it only, a square hole does not go in a round peg, so uh, it, you've got to have the right one to match. And the manual will tell you, if you go through the manual in the setup chart, it'll actually tell you, uh, you look up, this is an older manual, because this tool is pretty old, and I picked it up off eBay uh, for about 70 bucks plus shipping costs. But it'll give you the tube number, the heater voltage, but also it gives you the adapter socket. So which one you need? 14, 19, 17. The monitors that we use in video games are 23. A lot of these was for the, for the older television types. That's Star Wars in the background. So that's why all the different ones, but most of the ones we're using is a 23 because the video game industry used the 23 pretty much exclusively. Okay. Now, a lot of times when we're talking about monitors, we're talking about the chassis. But in today's video, when we're talking about monitor, we're actually talking about the tube. And so, in this book, you actually can see on the tube, like where it'll say RCA or Samsung, who actually made the tube. But a lot of times, it's a TV manufacturer, like Magnavox or somebody like that. So, a lot of times when we ask you guys what kind of monitor you have, and you'll tell us, well, I have an RCA. Well, that's your tube. So this is the tube, and this is the chassis. This is a Benson Imperial monitor that we're working on today uh, with a foreign tube. I don't even, it's in Korean or something. I can't even tell you what it is. But Benson chassis with the foreign tube. Pretty common. And, and that's a really good point about the chassis, is the chassis has nothing to do with rejuvenation. So if it's a G07 chassis, or a, a, a Benson chassis, or a... a a WG chassis, or give me another name of a different chassis. What's a well, like a Cortex? A Cortex chassis. Right. That has not to do anything with the rejuvenation. Right. Fact, it's the tube. You could do a tube even if it didn't have the chassis on it. So yeah. you could just do a tube by itself. And as a matter of fact, we are going to take the chassis off. We're going to unplug the neck board. We're going to take the flyback off, discharge the monitor, and then plug in our 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 source to the rejuvenator. Okay, so well, let's get started with that. Also, we might you might want to see in some of the shot here is a test rig that we have. So don't pay too much attention to this. All it is is a test rig. We're running a JAMA board down there. This particular JAMA board has a few graphic uh, glitches. That's no big deal. We just wanted to hook up something to here so that we could run that today. So this is our test rig and uh, then we can hook this up to there. So where do we get started? We, we've got our game and we got the monitor and we got the rejuvenator stand. What's our first step? Well the first step we need to do is you notice that we have uh, the, the actual the test board running. I, I put this little test board together for testing. Got all the stuff and there's a board but we got it running on the game so we need to turn it off and we need to discharge the monitor, pull the neck board off, make sure that it's safe because anytime that you're messing with monitors there's some pretty high voltage and so you want to make sure that you don't get popped you know so that's our first step is to safely discharge the monitor connect up uh, the rejuvenator okay we have our 
a discharge tool, we've already taken off the anode which is attached to the flyback. Now Stan's going to remove the neck board. Remove the neck board. And then we want to make sure and unplug the monitor so we don't want any power. Just in case anything goes wrong, we don't want it to go back through and knock out our board or tear up our chassis or anything like that. Remember, we're only working with the tube today. So the only thing that has power going to it right now is the adapter. There is actual live power that's coming in through this adapter that, that we will connect up to the board. The monitor itself is completely disconnected from any power source or any feed. Um, I'm going to connect our adapter. He's just lining it up he with does. his key. See the key right there and there's the key right here on the bottom. See that right there? It just goes right in and it connects up and I'm just going to give it a nice little push in. You just see it pop in right there because you want to get a good connection. Now if you notice we already start to got some glow right there. We may have to turn the lights down which you can actually see. Tim's going to go turn the lights down for us a little bit. But you can actually start to see the neck board glowing. You see the neck board glowing there? We're going to we're going to light that sucker up to um, give it good a, a good setting. So if you'll turn the lights back on, we'll adjust our make our adjustments. I'm going to drop our power off, our BK real fast. What we're going to do is we're going to go between each color and we'll start with the red. We're going to center up all of our, our color tracking. We're going to first start with our... So right field. now you're kind of putting everything in neutral, just in general settings. Yep. Put it in a neutral. It matters where everything is set. We don't want to turn it on and send too much power to it, right? Right, right, right. And you're really, I haven't, you know, I've, I've known of stories of, of tubes getting, that are old and get blown, they go too far. I have not experienced that myself with rejuvenation. It's only been a positive experience, but I take precautions. Right. So we'll do our disclaimer here right now. You really want to do tube rejuvenation when uh, you've already done your cap kit you kind of kind of as a last resort but Stan's going to say do it it's okay but I, I kind of look at tube rejuvenation as you know your last ditch effort to try to get that old monitor working but anyway so be careful when doing this it can and it has ruined your tube if that's the case your tube was probably fixing to go anyway don't sweat it don't worry about it but most of the time this will work all right just kind of going through, taking a look at our heater voltage. So we're going to go... Again, you got this off the internet. This one here is an updated one of this. This old manual from the 70s uh, from VK. But here, this is, this is the general instructions for the CRT uh, rejuvenation. And on here, it has newer updated monitors. And so we're looking at heater voltage 16, uh, 6.3. Well, I have learned over experience that that is a little low, so I want to go between uh, 7 and 9 is really where I want to set it to get a good result. Because I ran it, used to run it at 6.3, and it just wasn't enough to give me the results I wanted. So I want to make sure I'm set my heater voltage, then I want to set the heater, I want to turn here on red, and I'm going to set my heater voltage, and if you notice my little pin goes up, will now go... I can go right here, about right there to about 8, okay? 6.3. If you notice here, see. where it lines up perfectly with what the manual said is I needed 6.3. Okay. So you see the different gauges on here, and that's really where I want to be, right there. Okay? So I've got my heater set. That's the first thing for that color. Then I'm going to turn down here. I'm going to set my G1 voltage. Okay, and I'm going to set my G1 voltage, like I said, about between, about right here at 10. I've learned that that's a good setting for that, okay? And who taught you that you learned all of this from the manual, so you had no prior experience in this. None. You just bought it off eBay, said, I want to read you my, if so, really, it's not that hard, right? It's not if that hard. If you follow instructions, pretty easy to do. Pretty easy to do. The first couple times I was a little, you know, afraid I was going to, toast something but I didn't and I just learned as it got better so now I'm gonna set my G2 cutoff voltage because I want to make sure that my cutoff voltage if you notice I can 
because I'm on red on my gun selector, so my gun selector here is selecting that gun. I want my cutoff voltage, if I'm going to start my starting voltage about 6.3, I want my cutoff voltage, well, about 10. I don't want it to send more than 10 volts, okay, because I'm doing about 7.9, so I'm going to set my cutoff voltage, and then I'm going to read my emissions, and it really tells me about the life of the monitor through the emissions, and I'm seeing that I'm getting a good emissions from there, so, and... Um, so I'm good and then I'm going to set my color tracking you have to do this for for each one now my color tracking if you notice there's a set color tracking bar right there yeah I'm going to drop that down right to, on that line right on that line okay, okay. so you just kind of go through each one you're just going around the dial I'm just going around the dial and now I'm at the remove shorts and if you notice these three buttons the remove shorts the clean and balance and the rejuvenation. Now we're getting to the nitty gritty. That all was set up. That now we're fixing to do something. Because before I push this button, I want to make sure I don't have too low a voltage or too high a voltage or my cutoff that will allow too much voltage to go to. I did all of that. I checked for leakage on my G1 and there was no leakage. I, I didn't really show you that. But if you look on my heater, on this leakage heater and G1, I'm in the OK zone. OK, OK. If it was leak, if there was a leak between the two, it peg over here to where it says leakage. There's not. So, again, I'm going to go to remove shorts. It dropped down here. This is where we want to turn the lights out so you can see what happens in the neck board before I push the button. So, hang on with us. Um, I'll go back to make sure I got my color tracking because I touched that knob. Okay. And now I'm going to rejuvenate. We're going to start with the first rejuvenation just because we want to give you a little bit of demonstration. So Jonathan, if you'll do that and you'll turn the lights off and you can see that when I touch, when I hit this, when I hit this, it's going to glow and short a little bit and then go out. And on the meter over here, it's going to go all the way up to the good and it's going to kind of linger there and then fluctuate a little bit and it'll go down and that's when I'm going to let off so so I'm going to watch this as this if you notice that 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 went my meter is going down there should be some sparks coming from that in just a second it may take a one or once or twice for that to happen I'm going to hold the button until the meter goes down and it's starting to go down to about 10 and then I'm going to let off and it's starting to drop and drop and there it goes and there it goes back up you see the sparking in there and it went to zero so we're going to do that a couple times I'm going to wait 30 seconds to allow the neck board to reheat before we apply again you don't want to rejuvenate more than a few times per per gun per right. gun Red, gun. green, and blue. Red, green, and blue. That's okay. right. We're doing the red right now. We're doing the red. Okay. And I'm actually, I started rejuvenation so you could see, but I'm, the really the, the sequence that you want is you want to remove shorts. If you notice when I turn it down to remove shorts, you can see the voltage is less. So it sets less voltage. I've moved it to remove shorts and the neck board, it's running less. So I just want to run a couple times just to make sure that I don't have any shorts. And watch the meter to see it'll tell me if I have a short and I don't okay so now I want to go to clean and balance and I'm going to do my clean and balance I'm going to let that neck glow heat back up and we'll wait about 30 seconds force is with us. Okay, here we go. And I'm going to heat it up. And it only goes to about 6.3 and then drops and back down. If you watch there, you probably saw it, it, it cleaning itself. It'll, it'll kind of spark up. And then we do this about three times per clean and balance and about three times per rejuvenation per gun. So we've done one Clean the balance and one rejuvenate. Okay. 
set it back up to rejuvenate on red one more time. If you, if you don't let it heat back up, then you kind of waste your time. So you got to let it heat back up those guns. Then if you watch the meter here, it's going to peg out. All right. Then it drops down, drop, 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 drops down. When it gets down, I'm going to let off. And we're going to do that again. This is some good, we're getting some good readings on it. When it stalls out and kind of fluctuates on the needle, then it stall, stalls out and fluctuates on the needle. That means it's dirty or got some carbon buildup and things we got to burn off. One of the things I noticed when, before we started this was the red looked like it had the most issue. Yeah. So, and we'll see, help. and we'll see some, some good, some really good results for, according to the meter. And I'm going to do it one more time here. It's going to peg out, and it's going to start to drop. It's a nice, smooth drop. It didn't fluctuate right. any. Okay, and I'm going to do a clean and balance one more time, and then the red gun will be done. And let that heat up just a, about 30 seconds. You let it heat up for about 30 seconds because you want to balance the colors. And so it does a really good job on these monitors. And uh, a rejuvenation will last um, about really about um, about a year, two years, depending on usage. Um, in my game room I've seen, and that's with me turning them on at night and playing them. Okay, one last time on the clean. And you see it just goes up about halfway instead and then drops down. Stall just a little bit there. Like so realistically, that. if you just have one game, this might not profit you. You sh but you could go down to a TV repair shop and have them do it for you. Yes. But if you've got several games, this thing can pay for itself real quick. Yes. Uh, if you if you want your monitor to look the best, then you should rejuvenate your tube because it really makes a difference. It really makes those colors vibrant and stand out. So and that's our red gun, and uh, we'll do the other guns here in a minute. So you went back and you repeated the same process for the other two guns and then all we did was hook back up the monitor and uh, in any way but I noticed that it didn't it looked great it looked a lot better but it wasn't adjusted or anything so I noticed before you asked me don't do any adjustments or anything can you talk a little bit about why you want to do that sure I took the monitor back to kind of its default settings before I adjusted it out so we get an accurate reading uh, on the rejuvenator. So I turned all the drives down in the, and the, the cutoffs and the contrast and the brightness down to about where it would have come from the factory so that when I rejuvenated, when it went back in, I would get, the, get uh, put it in neutral, as you said earlier. And so that we would get an accurate, an, uh, an accurate uh, cleaning and rejuvenation. Right. So you didn't want the red turned up and then try to rejuvenate and show the red is high or something. Correct. So he kind of adjusted everything to the middle, then he did the rejuvenation, then he come back with the monitor adjustments and he made his adjustments. Anyway, the end result looks fantastic and uh, so anyway, a, a great job Stan. We want to thank you so much for allowing us to use your rejuvenator. Now we do want to say this, that um, you know, you had a B&K Precision mm -hmm. uh, Rejuvenator. There are some cheaper brands out there. I highly want to recommend that you do not go with a cheaper brand. One thing is, because of those adapters, and the B&K brand is well known, it's a great brand to use, And but the main thing I want to stress about using those is you can find the adapters also for right. that. So if you buy some off-brand, you may get a good deal, but you may not be able to get the parts for it that we need to work on arcade games. Correct. And I think you paid about a hundred and a half for yours uh, a couple years ago. Prices fluctuate on eBay. If you get outbid on one, it goes for four or five hundred dollars. Don't panic. They come around pretty often. Just be patient. You can get one at a pretty decent price. Usually cheaper than a newer monitor. I would say that's a good benchmark. Maybe around two hundred dollars or less. You see around two hundred dollars or less, you probably should pick it up because that's going to save. You're going to save that much just in one monitor alone. Anyway, thanks again, Stan, for having us over and for letting us shoot this video in your awesome game room here. 
And again, we want to thank everybody for watching the Arcade Repair Test video series. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, you can email or call us. You guys by now know how to get in touch with us. So thanks again for watching the Arcade Repair Test video series. Still in high depth.